Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. It's Friday night, 9.30 p.m. Calgary, Alberta, and uh, May the 14th, uh, Friday night. I'm so happy it's Friday night. Um, I'm happy the weekend is here. It's, it's great. It couldn't have come at a better time. So I'm so glad you can join me, and I'm so glad to be able to do these shows. This is a 30-minute uh, live streaming Internet radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com. This is Child Abuse Prevention, and Human Rights Abuse Prevention is up to us. And really, you know, I just wanted to be one more voice out there just to keep talking about child abuse, keep talking about abuse against anyone, really, but especially for the children because they have no one to protect them. And, you know, if people aren't standing up for them, they have no protection. And so I really want to be just one more voice out there to, to just to keep talking and, and keep getting this information out to people, whoever is listening. And I have so much great support. You know, I've got friends in Australia, friends in the U.K., friends in Canada, and, and friends in the United States that just really are like family to me, and they tune in, and they, they're here for me all the time, and I just really appreciate it. Really great, awesome advocates, um, you know, who are really, we're all united together in this, and um, I hope to have some, some on my show here, uh, you know, in, in the future, if they'd like to come on and be part of the show and do a show, it would be, be great. Um, yeah, we're talking, we're going to continue talking about domestic violence, and I had a couple of safety plans. I've been sort of talking about this, um, well, for a few weeks now, and on um, Wednesday night, we were sort of beginning to look at the safety plans that I found. I just found two, but there's a whole bunch of them out there. And you can find these um, uh, safety plan. That I found two that I thought were really good, quite extensive and really good information. You can get that at www.ncadv.org, and that's the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. And you can also get a safety plan at www.domesticviolence.org, and that's another great um, safety plan. And so, yeah, I'm just so glad to be able to keep getting this information out here. And I've gone over these safety plans before, and every time I do, it's just great because it just reinforces, you know, um, how much, you know, people, mostly women, are, are battered and, and abused in domestic violence situations. But there are some men out there who are abused as well because they refuse to hit their partners back. And so they have to take whatever abuse their partners dish out, whether it's, you know, their their girlfriend or wife or, you know, uh, same-sex partner. You know what I mean? It, it, it doesn't matter. These are people that should love them and should care about them. And uh, same with the women, you know, they, they trust their partners to, to love and, and care for them, and then they end up in these situations with violent people who abuse them, and, you know, they feel like they have nowhere to go, nowhere to turn, and sometimes they try to get help, and that help just doesn't seem to be what they needed or, or actually was, you know, followed through with, and it's just such a horrible mess, and, you know, there's so many people suffering in this situation, and um, this this article, <clears throat> excuse me, on the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, uh, they have domestic violence facts, and this article is actually... Oh, it's a few years old now, but uh, even just looking at these, uh, at these, this information from 2007, it just gives you an idea of what's actually happening out there. They said one in six women, and this was in 2007, so obviously these statistics are a few years old, but sexual assault, assault and stalking, one in six women and one in 33 men will have experienced an attempted or completed rape. Uh, nearly 7.8 million women have been raped by an intimate partner at some point in their lives. 7.8 million women. Uh, sexual assault or forced sex occurs in approximately 40 to 45 percent of battering relationships. So that's almost 50 percent. May as well just say half, maybe even a bit more. It's just it's not reported. Uh, one in 12 women and one in 45 men have been stalked in their lifetime. 81 percent of women stalked by a current or former intimate partner are also physically assaulted by their partner. 31 percent are also sexually assaulted by their partner. Right? It's just crazy. These statistics are just crazy. And you can get this at uh, the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, the ncadv.org. It's a great website, lots of great information, resources, and links and stuff on there. And boy, if you're suffering in a domestic violence situation, you want to check out that website uh, because they have hotlines, they got information for you, you know. Um, yeah, so it's not a professional show. I don't hold any professional counseling certificates, therapist certificates, nothing like that. I'm just a perfect, I'm, I'm a private citizen who, I fight for child rights. I'm sta- I, I, I study child rights and human rights, actually. And um, I'm very much interested in, in, the, in this whole plague upon society that's been here forever. I'd like to see some changes done, and I thought, why am I just sitting on the sidelines, not getting involved when I don't like what I see every single day going on around me, uh, what happened in my own life, in my own family, what happened in friends of mine, you know, who, who grew up in these homes full of domestic violence and abuse and child abuse and everything else. And I thought, why am I just sitting on the sidelines, not saying anything, when I know 
uh, for a fact that this is just going on all the time, all around the world, and we see it in the news, we see it in the paper. I guess the only re- one of the reasons it really affected me was because I grew up in that situation, and so when I see the reports, I just know how real it is because I, I know how real it is. I've been there and experienced it. So, you know, for people who don't have any idea, they've just never experienced domestic violence, don't know what it would be like to grow up in a home full of domestic violence or to be a victim of domestic violence or a survivor of domestic violence, right? Uh, they just wouldn't have a clue, and so I really hope that people will tune in, and if you haven't experienced it, we'll, we'll show some, some uh, real support for people out there who are going through this and be supportive as, as supportive as possible. Um, you know, we have to, to, to not judge for sure. We can't judge and condone. Uh, really, the, most, we, uh, the best thing we can do is support these people in, in whatever way we can. And I know it's hard because you wish people would get the help that they need before they end up in a pine box, but quite often that's just not the case. You know, they... They stay in these homes, especially adults, you know, who make the decision. They're adults, and they have the decision. They can make the decision to leave and, you know, go in hiding or whatever they have to do to save their lives, but they don't, and they end up killed and murdered at the hands of their their, their um, partners. And uh, it's really unfortunate, and it's just sad because you think, why couldn't that person get away? Why couldn't they get help? And there's so many reasons surrounding it, and there's so many uh, psychological issues surrounding it, and... Uh, um, as well as a physical situation, you know, where they could be uh, feel that there's more threat to their life if they do try to leave. So, see, there's so many, uh, it's a real sickness, it's a real disease, these abusers, are, you know, who go around putting this abuse on people. And I really believe that everyone should speak up, speak out, and get these people busted, get them put behind bars where they need to be. Um, they need help, obviously, or they wouldn't be treating their family members like this. And... It's unfortunate that society has allowed them to continue on because what it does is it passes the cycle of abuse right along from one person to the next. And children growing up in in abusive homes quite often do have a lot of behavioral issues. And even if they weren't abused themselves, tend to pass the cycle on because it's what they know. It's it's learned behavior. And learned behavior is very hard to correct if you don't get something done about it uh, because they feel that there's nothing wrong with the way they're behaving because it's the way they grew up. So they see nothing wrong with it. And so it's a real psychological problem. And I think people, you know, unless they really show signs of, you know, breaking that cycle, they really need help, right? And so it's so sad because who suffers? The children generally suffer. Uh, The adults are suffering in the situation really by choice, by staying. Um, The children don't have a choice. And that's why the parents have to, the the, the parent who is not abusing needs to get the child out of the home if there's real um, a real, if it's an unsafe environment, if that child could be killed, you could be killed, uh, murder, you know, murder suicides are, are happening all the time where partners kill their whole families and then kill themselves. Um, this is happening all the time. It's really horrible, and uh, we, this is what I study. This is what a lot of people study, and uh, because we need to make some changes and we need to see something done about this. So it's not a professional show, you know. I just, I'm just a person who really cares, and I'm, and I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. I'm going to uh, be a public advocate, uh, speaking out against child abuse and and domestic violence and really all human rights abuses. Uh, and I thought, hey, I, I may as well just get started and, and get busy and start talking. I just wanted to be one more voice with everybody else who's doing this awesome work out here. And I just thank everybody who's doing anything and who's been doing this for years. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'm happy to come up behind and just sort of help bolster you guys up because there's been some real pioneering voices out here for a long time, and they've been talking and talking and talking. And, you know, I'm just happy to be able to finally say, hey, I'm listening, and um, so are a lot of other people. So keep up the good work. And, um, you know, this is a a show ultimately about abuse. So there's a lot of sensitive material and sensitive topic material. If you're sensitive to the topics of abuse and you think it's going to bother you, you have to listen at your own discretion and turn the show off. It's your discretion. You listen at your own discretion. You make the decision for yourself what is good for you to listen to and what is not. And you make that decision on your own accord. Listen to the show on, at, you know, in your, in, at your own discretion, please. And if you're a young person under the age of 18, I fight for child rights and I'm standing up for your very life. And there's a bunch of us out here who are doing this. So we are trying to protect your life and save your life so you get someone to listen to this, these types of shows to make sure that it's okay that you listen to this. Um, because the, I don't know where the blog talk players are now. They could be placed around on different websites. And you want to make sure you have an adult clear it, that it's okay. Uh, whether you should listen to it or not. They might not feel it's age-appropriate, and if it is and they, they're willing to sit there and listen to it with you, and just so that you, if you have questions, they can help you find the resources and find the answers, you know, um, 
then that's great. But I really think you should have permission to listen to the show, even though ultimately it is about stopping child abuse and it is ultimately for children. There's a lot of adult content on here because I really think that abuse, uh, the, the more we silence abuse, the more it's going to continue on. That's why abuse is allowed to continue on. I keep saying that, but it's like people don't quite get it. But that's just the whole truth, right? Abuse is always tried, you know, abusers always try to silence abuse. And society tries to silence it because they don't want to deal with it. Um, by saying nothing, they're silencing it. You know, if, if people don't stand up and say something, they're automatically silencing it. And that's the whole issue, right? Mainstream society doesn't want to hear anything about it. So they are basically silencing abuse. And the abusers, of course, they want it silenced because they want to continue doing what they're doing and they don't want to get busted. So that's the whole issue. We have to talk about this stuff. It's very important. And uh, so we'll continue on. And, um, yeah, I'm glad that you can be here. So well, I wanted to look at a safety plan um, two of them actually, but this one, I'm going to start with this one. It was, it's off of the NCADV, the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, and you can pull that up at www.ncadv.org, and it's a great safety plan. It says, I'll just read right from the page here, and you can pull it up and go through it with me if you want to. It says, if you are still in the relationship, think of a safe place to go if an argument occurs. Avoid rooms with no exits, like the bathroom, or rooms with weapons, like the kitchen. Right. Think about and make a list of safe people to contact. That's very important. And you want to do this ahead of time. You know, if your life is being threatened and your life is in danger, you have to get this stuff done ahead of time because you never know when your partner is going to become so abusive and so violent that they could they could threaten your life. And if you don't have this stuff ready, you're not going to be ready to, to make an escape or to even get out or get help. Right. And it says memorize all important numbers. Yeah, you don't want to have numbers written down, uh, safety numbers written down in your in your wallet or your purse or whatever, or somewhere hidden away. Because if your if your partner, your abuser finds them, then they'll be in a rage because they found phone numbers, right? So you memorize all your important numbers. Make sure that you can you can uh, recall them under stress, so that if you are under a lot of stress and uh, obviously living in a home with domestic violence, there's a lot of stress all the time. So just get good at memorizing these important phone numbers and uh, and establish a code word. They said here. Uh, establish a code word or a sign so that family, uh, friends, teachers, or coworkers will know that when you call, you you would use that sign or that code word when you call um, for help, right? Then they would know and they would phone 911, see? So if your partner was standing over you and you had the phone, which generally a lot of times happens, um, I've heard cases of it and... and um, you know, they try to get the phone away from you, but if they see you dialing 911, they might try to, they might kill you. Um, but if they see, oh, you're just phoning your, your, uh, your friend or your, or whatever, or somebody that they think is okay for you to phone, um, you could have a code word established so that um, they would phone 911, right? And then your partner wouldn't know, and the police would come right away. And hopefully, hopefully, you know, we know that that's not always the case. Uh, remember, you have the right to live without fear and, and violence, right? It says, think about what you will say to your partner if he or she becomes violent. And then remember that you have the right to live without fear and violence, right? And so many times people who have been beaten down in these relationships, you know, domestic violence and, and whatnot, you know, they're so beaten down, these people are, you know, that they don't even know that they deserve to have a good life. And especially if they, have you know, grew up in homes that were full of domestic violence or if they suffered any kind of like child abuse and whatnot uh, they just weren't shown any love or care as children and then they go into these abusive relationships that it just wears them that much further down uh, they have really no self-esteem and, and no confidence in themselves and, and and you really can't blame people because when you're uh, psychologically like physical abuse is bad but but what's worse is the emotional abuse because it rips your heart out and, and it really causes a lot of pain and, um, and you know a lot you start developing a lot of self self-worthlessness you don't feel like you're you know these people don't feel like they're worth anything they don't feel like um you know that anybody would love them or could love them you know because this is what they've been told right over and over and over again right and it starts to sink in and after a while with the physical assaults and the verbal assaults and the emotional assaults the psychological assaults and threats and whatnot they start it's 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 just a form of um uh, it's just mind control, right? They get a hold of your mind and, and then they, the people's minds, right? So that's why they stay in these relationships because they're sort of um, brainwashed, right? It's so bad. And we see, you know, I've seen this in my own life and I've seen it in, a, in other people's lives and I know it's happening to people all the time. And uh, just, I think that's why I, on my shows, I keep saying you do count, you do matter. I don't care what anybody said before or said to you as a child or as, uh, you know, whether it's a partner or, or your parents, you know, you do count, you do matter. We all deserve to have a good life. No one should be abused and no one should have to live with abuse in their lives and especially children. 
right? So if if you have children and you are living in an abusive home, you really have to think of them first. First, you have to get yourself out. If you can't get your child out, if you can't get yourself out, you have to make sure you and your child get out. You know what I mean? It's so important. So it says, if you have left the relationship, here's what you can do. Uh, here's what they suggest, right? Change your phone number, screen your calls, uh, save and document all contacts, messages, injuries, or other incidents involving the batterer. And that's important because if you don't document stuff, it, when it goes to court, or if it does go to court, which hopefully it would go to court and they would be put away for a very long time, um, if you don't save uh, this documentation, quite often there's, the court has nothing to go by. You know what I mean? They don't have anything to, to in their hands that's tangible that they can say, on this date, this and this happened, and on this date, this and this happened. I mean, even if they see a sign, like a, re a rep repetitive type of sign, it might match up with some behaviors of that person, and they might be able to put them away just because you documented everything. So I think it's really important to document stuff. Just make sure that you don't have it around. Uh, well, this is after you leave, right? This is if you've left the relationship. You can start documenting all the contacts, all messages, all injuries, and any other incidents invol involving the batterer, right? Change locks if the batterer has a key. And I would make sure, of course, you want to do that. Uh, you don't want to allow the, the batter, the, the abuser, to ever come be able to do that to you again, right? It says avoid staying alone and uh, plan how to get away if confronted by an abusive partner. If you have to meet your partner, do it in a public place. And I think, you know, if you have to meet your partner, never go alone, right? Um, ha make sure if, if if there were, let's say it was a situation where you you just had to meet your your abuser. Uh, first, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't ever go alone, and I would never ever meet them anywhere in a private place. I would go with a backup of minimum of ten people, uh, ten big men maybe, or ten big women or whatever, ten big huge people, and say, look, these are my friends, and they will protect me. So you will not try anything. And I mean, you need to get support, right? I mean, people need support in their lives, right? And uh, so you can't allow these people to just continue to abuse you, you know what I mean? And I know people personally who have gotten out of these relationships, and they are now speaking out um, and, you know, saying, look, you can do it. It's a lot of work, and they had a lot of trouble, you know, but they saved their lives, basically, and their children's lives by doing it. And it just makes me so happy to see that because I, I, a dear friend of mine uh, is, is an advocate uh, for really uh, speaking out against child abuse and speaking out against child sexual abuse and also um, domestic violence, right? And she's uh, Leela, Leela Albert Smith, and uh, she's a, a dear friend, and she studies um, um, criminal justice and whatnot. She's a, she got her children away from an abusive man, their father, right? And she got herself away from an abusive partner who who was literally just destroying them. And um, she, she, she took the, the steps it needed to take to get out from under this relationship, which could have ended up very bad. Um, you know, she could have ended up killed or anything, and the children could have been ended up killed. And But she got them out, and she's out. She's free, and she's happy. And, and uh, you know, her children, they, they've had you know, a long, hard road to, to get over what they've had to, but she, she did it. Instead of just suffering along in it, thinking, oh, no, I have to stay, and the kids have to stay, and, and allowing this man to continually abuse them in every way, you know, it's so wrong, right? And now she's a free woman. She's happy. Um, she's she's helping other people. So she's just uh, really a hero to me. And not only that, but a really special friend and uh, just a dear lady. And she does so much work for people, and she really cares about people. I hope to have her information. Uh, she would. Um, I did a little show about actually a while back. It's been probably since the winter sometime. I actually did like a little bio on her, little biography, and. Um, I know, like, at one point I was going to do another one, and we've been so extremely busy, her, her and I, that we haven't been able to connect on that. But I'd like to do that, and when I do, I'll let everybody know so that you can tune in. I know she was just on um, uh, Victims uh, Speak Out, the VSO, which is um, Mary Aguilar. She's on um, Blog Talk Radio, and um, you can check that out, too. That's uh, Victims Speak Out. Leela Albert Smith was just on her show last, uh, was it... Uh, uh, Tuesday night, or uh, it was sometime this week. I know I've been so incredibly busy. I'm, all the days have like kind of glommed together. But anyway, she is a lady who is an example. So if you want to talk to someone who knows about getting out of an abusive relationship, you want to get a hold of her because she did it and she had to go to court and she 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 had you know she had a lot of trouble, but she got out and she's she's free and she's telling everybody you have to do it. Save your life, save your children's lives. You deserve to be happy and you deserve to not be living in abuse. Right? That's just so important. It says here. Um, 
vary your routine if you've left the relationship vary your routine you know don't you know, don't always go to work the same way change things up you know what i mean make it a little bit hard for people to get a hold of you notify school and work contacts i would uh tell people about what happened let them know that you're you know you've left an abusive relationship and that you they need to and show them a picture of your abuser and say this is my uh ex abuser and this person you know could possibly try to to contact me here at work or wherever you are, right? And then they would know and they would have a picture of them and then they'd be able to keep an eye out for you, right? It's so important to get that support from everyone. Generally, if you tell people what's going on, uh, you might find at least one or two that are willing to do that for you out of a group of maybe 100, but still it's better than nothing, right? And, um, and and they might actually really care a whole bunch and really want to protect you. So it's a great idea. And you could have people call. And if you didn't pick up your phone, they would know something was wrong. You know what I mean? There's lots of things people can do to uh, keep people safe, right? Call a shelter for battered women. I think that's very important. Have that support and, and have that some people to talk to who know what they're and who've been through it, who know what it's like. Uh, it says, if you leave the relationship or are thinking of leaving, you should take important papers and documents with you to enable you to apply for benefits or to take legal action. You know, it's really important. I heard about this in many cases that people, you know, they had to run for their lives. So what happens when they left, uh, the partner, you know, destroyed all the documents and evidence, of course, uh, and also anything that, you know, birth certificates, we're talking everything. They would just destroy it or just, you know, lose it or whatever. So it's really hard to apply for benefits and all that right away if you don't have your information with you. So I think the best thing to do is, is take a copy of all that stuff when your abuser's not around and then give it to somebody for safekeeping. Don't keep it in the house. Then you don't have to worry about collecting all of that when, you know, if you have to escape and you have to get away, you know, somebody will have that in their safekeeping and it has to be somebody you trust. You know what I mean? It's going to have all your social security cards, your birth certificate. It can't be with somebody that, know that that you don't trust but you know you could find somebody who you really trust and then you could leave it with them or you know if you had enough money which a lot of times people don't you could register for a safety deposit box and keep them in there you know there's different things you could you could get a, a PO box in a mailbox and just stash your just have it be a private box and, and stash it you know what I mean and there's just got to be ways for people to be able to do this stuff right it says here uh, important papers you should take include social security cards, birth certificates for you and your children, marriage license, leases or deeds in your name and or both your names of your part, you know, your partner's name, uh, your checkbook, your charge cards, bank statements, charge account statements, insurance policies, proof of income for you and your spouse, pay, pay stubs and W-2s and any documentation of past incidences of abuse, which would include like photos, police reports, medical records, etc. That's very important to keep that stuff uh, because you'll have it available and right away, you know what I mean, instead of saying, well, we used to have all this documentation, but now we don't. And so that's the whole thing. You you want to have that stuff handy, right? If your life is being threatened and you have to run, you don't have time to go around and collect all this stuff. I mean, who would have time to go and go sift through the papers to try to get a hold of all this stuff and then know which box it's in? It would be impossible. So um, you just have to kind of have a safety plan. And that's why these safety plans are so cool. And it says here, you know, you can make your own safety plan according to your life, right? It says follow the steps. It's called my safe, my personal safety plan. And it says follow the steps um, for increasing my safety plan and preparing uh, to protect myself in case of further abuse. So that's really cool. You can make your own safety plan and, um, and then you can um, sort of tailor make it for to match, you know, what you need, right? So it says here, to increase my safety, I can do some of the following things. Number one, when I have to talk to my abuser in person, I can, right? And then you can write out what, what it is. And this way you'll be prepared, see? Number two, when I talk to my abuser on the phone, I can do this and that, right? So it's just kind of, it's really cool. It, there's a whole bunch of information here. You can go through and fill out your own safety plan. And it says, Workplace guidelines. There are 60,000 incidences uh, incidents of on-the-job violence each year. Most victims know their attackers intimately. That was posted by the Chicago uh, Chicago Sun Times, September 30th, 1996. So obviously the, st the statistics are old. And I'm tonight, like I don't have the, the up-to-date current statistics on me, but it doesn't matter. It just shows you that in '96 there were 60,000 incidences of uh, of on-the-job violence each, every year at that time. Um, where you know vi the victims were attacked by their abusive partners at work, just tells you. It says what to do if you are experiencing 
domestic violence, notify your supervisor and the human relations manager about the circumstances regarding your situation. Discuss options available to you, for example, scheduling safety precautions, um, employee family assistance benefits. Submit a recent photo of the perpetrator to your safety manager in the event of a confrontation at work. Request that all information be treated with confidence to provide for your safety and well-being. You know, so that people, so that your abuser doesn't call and say, what time does uh, so-and-so come in? This is her uncle, you know, and then it could, you're, it's your abuser husband and you, that you've left. And then they, it doesn't, somebody who answers the phone says, oh, I don't know, uh, should be in around 8 o'clock. And there he is to meet you. See? So this is the thing, a very, very, or she, right, depending on who's the abuser. Because we all know that women can be abusers too. Um, it says, if you are the co-worker of someone experiencing domestic violence, if you suspect a co-worker is suffering abuse, do not directly confront her or him since it's important for an individual to self-disclose for her or his own safety and well-being. Express concern and a willingness to listen and be supportive if needed. Offer support by listening and assisting. When an individual is ready, they will confide in you, right? If a co-worker confides in you, encourage communication with the human resources manager and his or her supervisor, right? Uh, if you witness an incident at work, contact your safety manager or law enforcement immediately. Make sure that the incident is documented. And, um, yeah, if you are the supervisor or manager of an employee who is experiencing domestic violence, be aware of unusual absences or behavior and take note of bruises or emotional uh, distress. And contact the human resources manager to discuss concerns resources available and ways to support the employee for example safety planning employee assistance counseling family resource referrals flexible scheduling security measures be familiar with uh, with community resources and referrals and uh, be familiar with community oh yeah we read that sorry maintain confidentiality at all times be sensitive to the seriousness of the situation Discuss who is appropriate to speak with the employee. Agree on all forms of communication, providing the safety manager with a photo if there is a risk at work. Assist the employee in documenting all incidences with the batter that occurred in the workplace. And take action against domestic violence by encouraging employees to volunteer and by providing financial or in-kind support to your local domestic violence programs. So that's just so cool, you know. There is some great ways people can get involved, you know, to help people out, right? And especially if you know somebody in that situation, right? Um, it, there's a lot of people out there suffering in this, and really they need support. They don't need our, um, you know, our, our uh, you know, trying to talk them into something and trying to tell them how to live their lives. Of course, everybody wants everybody to be safe, and quite often people will tell people who are who are living in domestic violence situations, if you don't get out, I won't talk to you anymore. Like friends will say that just because they want to push this person to leave. But that's not the way to do it because these people have to leave when they on their own accord. Um, the best thing to do is say, look, if you are ready to leave, I can try to help you in whatever way I can. This way they know that they have your support and they very well might go ahead and try to do it uh, instead of pushing them away, right? So that's the whole thing. It's really important to be there for these people because they really need our help, and um, especially if there's children in, involved, you know what I mean? So, so important, absolutely. And, um, you know, we just have to keep... Uh, you know, reaching out to people, right? And if you are somebody who's suffering in a domestic violence situation, and you know, it's very important to find somebody to talk to. I know there's lots of websites out there for for people who have suffered in domestic violence, even for men. Uh, there's you know, men are survivors too. Domestic violence resources for the male victim on Facebook, and there's other um, websites too for men. There's one in six, and um, there's there's for men that are specifically for men who have been abused or sexually abused. Um, there's really lots and lots of websites out there for women and men who have suffered in domestic violence situations. And they're usually great because they have online support groups. You can chat with people who have been through the same types of issues. And, you know, it's great to have someone to talk to. They generally have resources that help them out and what worked for them. And, you know, it's so good to have somebody to talk to, right, so that you're not suffering alone. It's just horrible. We have about a minute left. I'm the Canada Regional Director for Dream Catchers for Abused Children. So happy to be, let me tell you. You check our website out, httpdreamcatchersforabusedchildren.com, and you can you can get some great information on there on how to report abuse, how, uh, child, uh, especially child abuse, right? Signs and symptoms of all the different types of child abuse, so important. 
it's really it's updated daily. That website is updated daily by more more than one person, but a handful of people working on that website all the time. So you will find new stuff and, and great stuff on there all the time. Um, so you want to check it, you know, every now and then to, to see what what new stuff is there. And there's books being written all the time. You know, Donna Shear, best-selling author, is the president of Dreamcatchers for Abused Children. Sandra Potter is also an author. She is the CEO and founder of Dreamcatchers for Abused Children. And these two ladies write books together. They co-author, and they also, you know, Donna Shear, best-selling author. She is also writing her own books, and she has a whole uh, set of ch- children's books. You want to check that out. That's you can find all that information out on the website. And you know, just take care, everybody. Make sure that you do reach out and get some help, and um, you know, get that support that you need. And, and you don't deserve to be suffering alone. And it's just not 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 good for people to be suffering in silence, right? So make sure you do get some help and just remember to keep that hope alive and you do count, you do matter. And have a great night, have a great weekend, keep yourself safe in in everything that you do. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.